All right, uh, welcome back for the second session on the local church. I hope you had a good break. Got your coffee and tea. Thanks, Nina, for coffee. Okay. All right, let's uh, continue on your PDF. Uh, we'll go to the next case study. Uh, but just before we go, uh, uh, one of the key points that Jachin uh, highlighted in the chat section, she has maintained a good balance between mighty manifestation and strong teaching to establish believers. Uh, I think that's such a key point there, isn't it? Uh, the balance, to strike a balance between manifesting or pursuing the supernatural and following that up or backing that up with good teaching. Either ways, good teaching, backing it up with uh, manifestations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit or su the supernatural is super is key. Um, okay, so... And there was a good balance there in that first church. Let's move on to the case study of the Antioch uh, church. You all remember where Antioch is last class? Oh, Bangalore, Lingrajpuram, here only, you know, Narayanpur across uh, southern Turkey. Okay. Um, okay, uh, let's start reading from, uh, I think, Sri Radha can uh, read. We, we are in page 29 in your PDFs. And page 42 and 43 in your, yeah, it's 43, okay. Case study the Antioch Church, started by believers who were scattered out of Jerusalem due to persecution, established through supernatural demonstrations, received the leader Barnabas sent from Jerusalem to strengthen them. Barnabas became the first pastor of the church in Antioch. Okay, cool, thank you. So just before we continue reading, so it says, started by the believers who were scattered from Jerusalem due to persecution. That means they were moved out from Jerusalem. Okay, so it was, the church was planted by those who moved out, yeah, and established through the method, right, through supernatural demonstration, okay? After, yeah, yeah. So it, it is now happening from the eighth chapter on. Okay, that's when they're beginning to scatter. Uh, to different places. They've, some of them have gone to Antioch. Uh, now they're planting a church and one of the methods or key methods they planted was through supernatural demonstration. That could be anything, prophetic ministry, uh, moving in signs and wonders, etc, uh, etc. Et okay. Received the leader, Barnabas, son of encouragement from Jerusalem to strengthen them. What does encouragement do? Does? It strengthens, right? It edifies, right? it builds you up. So that's why exactly he, they knew the right person to send Okay. All right. Uh, and then he becomes the first pastor of the church in Antioch. All right. Let's move on. Okay. Um, welcomed another leader, Paul, brought in by Barnabas to strengthen them. New believers were discipled through teaching. Identified with Christ, believers were first called Christians in Antioch. Okay. Cool. Great. So they were welcomed. Uh, they welcomed another leader. Paul, okay, brought in by Barnabas, friends, to uh, strength, strengthen them again, to encourage them again. New believers were discipled through teaching. Okay? So one, one of the ways and how you can disciple is through teaching. Okay, that's key. And identified with Christ. That means these people in church identified in Christ. They later... The word we get Christians or little Christs, that's what it is. Okay. Um, yeah, that's exactly what it is. So, and they, but before that, they were known as the people of the way. Okay. The term pastor. Um, maybe the word, but then just like how we know about, say, deacons or elders, it, before that word came, that activity of that, res you know, the responsibilities of that role was being de demonstrated, right? Uh, and so in Acts chapter 6, we talk about deacons, but the word deacons is not there on, but they demonstrate the responsibilities of the word. And so, and we see that, uh, who? Uh, James, right? Was it James in Acts chapter 14? where everybody is having this discussion and but the final decision is made yeah. by james right yeah and so he was demonstrating the responsibility of a single uh, leadership pastor so yeah yeah someone received prophetic ministry 
received prophetic ministry they followed other ministries to come into the church they so, allowed other agapus right agapus is a person uh, just to verify you'll read about him in acts chapter 21 verse 10 okay so he was he was functioning in the office of the prophet okay uh, so there's a difference between functioning in the office of a prophet and moving in the prophetic gift okay so that's for, let's study for another day okay received a prophetic ministry from agapus from jerusalem, from jerusalem. They, allowed they allowed other, other ministries, ministries to, to come, come into the church and impart into the life of the church yeah involved in social work sent relief to jerusalem church okay so um, okay then let's go on sorry yeah so the emergency of more leaders and emergence emergency yeah emergence emergence just emergence that means uh so emergence means it they emerged someone new came up okay uh came to the scene so to speak Let's find you. Of more leaders in the development of ministry teams yeah. in about two years yes please continue yes. leaders were in fellowship with one another and ministered to the lord involved in missions sent out apostolic teams to pioneer new churches they released their senior leaders in the apostolic ministry, became an apostolic mission base for apostles and prophets and missionary teams. Okay. Yeah, let's just pause there and just, uh, those are some amazing points there. Okay. Um, so from the point where Prince left off the last point, saw the emergence of more leaders and development of ministry. So again, we are all talking about this word growth. We, we haven't left that route. Thing, okay, so emergence means coming up to the scene is also pointing towards growth. The emergence of more leaders. The more people came in, they saw a need for more leaders, um, and then the development of ministry teams in about two years. So in about two years, there was growth. Okay, um, so in just with that point, so many things you can learn is you say, okay, you have a team meeting. All right, guys, we have to grow. And I think the first thing they would have done is in two years, we're going to give ourselves this time. In two years, let's see what we can do. So they give themselves a deadline and then they work towards that. Are you with me? So uh, anything that's all related with the goals and the missions and the visions, et cetera. Okay. Uh, and development of ministry teams. We don't know how many different teams they had, but development happened. That means progress happened. That means growth happened. Yes or no? So if any of your teams are kind of stagnant in your ministry, uh, it's a dangerous place to be in. Uh, that means anytime stagnancy comes, that means it attracts all kinds of unnecessary things like mosquitoes, you know, in this case, evil spirits and demons, uh, I mean, you know, but uh, the river has to flow, right? The river has to flow. Okay. Uh, involved. Yeah, yeah, sure. This might be addressed later also, but uh, when we are talking about, because we are talking about the growth in the in the terms of numbers, mm. um, so we know when we see this, uh, we have seen growth also in the terms of numbers, like yeah, majorly from 3,000 to 5,000. It's yeah. been specified and it's been, uh, you know, highlighted. Yes. But right now, uh, in the church that we are in, yeah. um, so how do we strike that balance or what will be our uh, mindset i would say perspective right. of growth in terms of numbers okay so do we say uh, that uh, only we are growing in numbers we are a growing church or right. we are an anointed church or we are doing the right things right. or uh, even though there are a few churches you know, uh, there will be a lot of years going past by there might not be that much growth or something. Yeah. So how do we uh, take it in a right perspective yeah. regarding numbers? So you look at it as a parameter, um, as one of the parameters to gauge growth. It's not the only parameter. So if how do I, I'm going to use a musical example, and I hope you don't mind that. Okay, is if, if someone is auditioning for singing, um, so we have at least four or five parameters. One is, are they singing in pitch? Uh, are they singing in time? Uh, can they sing harmony, etc. Right. And so I'm not going to, um, you know, 
another word i am not going to decide or make a decision on the person's singing ability based on just one parameter okay she cannot sing in pitch or she she cannot sing in time but she can sing in pitch that means there's scope for improvement kind of a thing so numbers or growing in numbers or growth in numbers is definitely one of the parameters that points to okay there's growth happening there right so there is growth happening but is this the only parameter you, you think okay you leave out the rest so what about the spiritual maturity maturity growth are they growing spiritually are they growing in science and wonders are they growing uh, you know what spiritually except so that's not the only thing so uh, yeah um, so that that is how you gauge probably is, is you don't just stick to one parameters okay you know you see a, like a large number church uh, it's great okay that means they are doing something right there can be there cannot be we don't know that um, so hence the thing so yeah but there can be isn't it because uh, you can also gauge the fruit of it eventually the fruit of the ministry so not not everything that is big necessarily is good we know that as well um, and so you take time to just gauge the fruit okay the consistency and what they're teaching you know you know so all that I hope I make sense, but yeah. Okay, another couple of key verses that was read is they were involved in missions. Uh, they sent out apostolic teams. Okay, a couple of sessions ago, we learned what an apostle means. Okay, yeah, to send out, um, and we get that from the Greek or the, the Roman word apostle, right? So you go into a region geographically, you change the atmosphere of it, isn't it? Um, so apostolic teams to pioneer new churches and the next point is became I, I love this point it says it became an apostolic mission base what is a, what is a base huh foundation foundation okay but it became an apostolic mission base no all those are very military kind of words right. sorry yeah exactly but it, so a base as in, uh, let's say, if, uh, I mean, so, so a country is going for a, a, to a war against uh, one of our neighboring countries. I hope it, it never happens uh, because it's not fun. Um, say, and uh, the base is one of the uh, border cities in northwest of India. That's a base. So that means every troop from every other part of India are going to meet there. And there, they are going to be refreshed. They are going to be replenished. It's, it's like a you know, truck layovers. You know, you go there, you get refreshed, you wash up, you take rest, and then you go. But this Antioch church was a mission base. I mean, that is such an amazing thing, isn't it? It's not the Jerusalem church that's the mission base, but anybody who's traveling, any missionaries from any different town or villages or cities would come here. It was like a mission base. And then, you know, they meet up with friends or whoever, and then they take off on another missionary journey. Isn't that awesome? Maybe they would come there, get, be empowered, be edified, be encouraged, and then they go on. they would go on. I have no doubt in them being encouraged there because Barnabas is there. <laughs> Son of encouragement, right? One yeah. more thing is um, this. I mean, this particular point being uh, referred in every uh, church case study is uh, receive prophetic ministry. Hmm. Uh, they allowed other ministers to come into. So, uh, just wondering, like, what is what was prophetic ministry at that point of time? Like, um, how was it like? Maybe just you gather together in the fellowship, and then you give words of prophetic of how what god is you know yeah I, I don't know the details of everything uh, like what it looked like but then it definitely would have looked like what prophetic ministry looks like now like you move in the supernatural you give a word of knowledge you give a, uh, you give a prophetic word uh in all of that but like i'm saying i don't know in detail what it would have looked like but then everything that looks like today would have looked like back then as well Yeah, they allowed other ministries to come into the church and impart into the life of the church. Yeah, and 
as, yeah, and I think one of the elements of prophetic ministry is, or the, one of the things of moving in the prophetic is you are able to discern. Now, prophetic is what you hear God speaking and you release that word, right? In other words, in very rare cases, you speak and He does, right? Okay, so Elijah said it will not rain for three years, and God listened and said, "Okay, I will not make it rain for three years." Okay, so uh, yeah, you discerning. I think you need. You all need, we all need to do a word study on uh, spiritual word study on the word discernment, discerning. Only if you can discern spiritually, you can discern what God is saying, right? What God is doing. There's a very thin line between discerning and judging. You think you're discerning, but what you're doing is actually judging. <laughs> I discern in my spirit that this boy here is, uh, you know. <laughs> and so that discernment is a huge element in prophetic thing. When you're moving in the in the prophetic, you need to, uh, yeah, uh, uh, something that we all need to grow and continue to grow in. Uh, because it is so powerful uh, as human beings, because we are in the flesh, we can tend to get arrogant. I moved in the prophetic yesterday. So he, you know, putting God in the box saying, okay, he will move in the same way today. You know, as what is happening is you're not discerning. Right? David constantly inquired of the Lord. You read about it in, in First Chronicles towards the end. And every time he went into the war, he inquired of the Lord, the scripture says. Before, like, will you give the Philistines into my hand now? God says, go. Second time he asked, will you give the Philistines into my hand? I will give you. Go. Third time, inquire of the Lord again. He says, will you give? Like, no. Go. Wait near the balsam trees. When you hear the sound of an army marching, then go. That's discerning, isn't it? What is happening? He's moving in the prophetic. But he's constantly, you know, leaning, yeah, waiting for God's instruction. So that is prophetic ministry is, is beyond the signs and wonders and everything what a prophetic gift can do. The core of it is, are you listening to God? Because he will want to move in a way ne like never before, like how we moved yesterday. And that is basically what prophetic ministry is. All right? Everybody alive? Okay. Okay, let's move on now to the more practical uh, points and of looking at stages of growth. Um, so most of these points here are kind of borrowed from the book called Apostolic Strategies, Affecting Nations by Dr. Jonathan David. Uh, and so uh, Pastor has taken that and he's kind of added some, adapted some key points to these uh, his points, okay? So stages of growth. Um, ah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I missed out. And thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, disagreement between two key leaders, Paul and Barnabas. So who was Barnabas? Son of encouragement, and he was also the lead pastor, the first pastor of the Church of Antioch. Paul is another key leader. Barnabas brings in Paul. <laughs> okay, uh, but there was disagreement. Uh, what is it going on, go on to say? It caused these leaders not only part company, that means they went their own way, but perhaps even distanced themselves from the Antioch church. That means Barnabas left his pastoral uh, responsibilities and he left. Paul left. What are the church members doing? Okay, so <laughs> we do not hear from them returning for any length of time to Antioch until Paul visits much later in Acts chapter 18, verse 22. So two things what you can do is, um, so in Acts chapter 15, it says that they left. You can go back to the PDF and see which year, and then you can go back to the PDF and you can see which which year is Acts 18. What's the time gap between that? What was he doing? You, yeah, it's none of our business, but yeah. The church seemed to have continued, but without its two main leaders. Not much is mentioned about the Antioch church after that. Okay. So not everything was uh, flowers and roses, walk in the park kind of thing. There was disagreement. Uh, they behaved like a normal church as well. <laughs> I mean, in, in today's context. <laughs> so uh, I don't know that. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't really know, but maybe Paul was Paul was Paul was very radical. He was saved in a very radical way, and the things that he believed was also very radical, right? 
um, yeah, I think as leaders, one of the things that we need to remember, uh, important leaders, is disagreement is not. I can disagree with you and still be respectful. Disagreement does not necessarily mean disrespectful, right? And I many many times that I disagree with Pastor Ashish, but. As in, we, we have a conversation, right? Okay, can we do this? Can we do that? Like, no, I say, Pastor, I don't think we need to do this. What am I doing? Uh, I'm disagreeing with him, but that doesn't mean, I, like, what I, what point I, you know? It's, there's a difference, isn't it? And so I think, see, disagreement has to happen. It is bound to happen when there are one or two people to come together. But how you continue to, you know, balance that out or work that out is, or sort that out will show your maturity, right? Um, so refusing to get offended because you disagreed with the person is very important, right? Beg your pardon, because of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be. I mean, but I think Mark, Mark and Paul had some direct disagreements as well. I think something must have happened between them, and so. And then you see here, you hear Paul saying that later. No, it's like Mark went back; he didn't want to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's awesome, guys. I mean, they were normal people, isn't it? So as much as they moved in 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 the supernatural, in the prophetic, and uh, they were doing some amazing things, uh, achieving some great things, um, and all of these points out to that they were normal people as well. Isn't it? So it's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so one of the first stages, um, the stages of growth in a church is what is known as the pioneering stage. What is the meaning of pioneer? Yeah, to start something from your own. Start something? Okay. Or be the first to start something, like a trailblazer, you know? Yeah. Trailblazer is a modern way of saying pioneering. So that means nobody before has done something what you are doing. And so you are setting the trend kind of a thing. So that's what a pioneering is, right? Um, be the first to use or apply a new method or whatever. So the first stage of growth is pioneering stage. Uh, OK, so should we all just stand up and do some stretches? So shall we? You all want to? We can. It's OK. OK, let's all stand. Okay, um, so here in class, we're going to take a minute break, OK? Because something interesting is happening. Uh, they've been sitting for a while. I know you've been sitting. So you back home can also just stand up and stretch your arms, your legs, your feet. If you want to take a minute, go wash your face as well. <laughs> the person who's supposed to be doing is not doing. <laughs> some, some. That is not stretching. <laughs> done, done. Stretch your legs, your thighs. OK. All right, I hope every one of you did that as well. <laughs> we, had, we had one student who left the class now. <laughs> She probably wanted to go out and stretch. So, okay, let's come back. Uh, pioneering stage. Uh, where are we in in the hard copy? Which page are we on? Uh, Forty-four. Okay, yeah, stages of growth. And the PDF here in twenty-nine. Um, so the first point: the church planting team and leaders establish commitment to a territory where the Lord has sent them. Okay, laying the groundwork through prayer, intercession, reaching out, building bridges with the community that is being reached. Third, it is the foundation laying stage. You are going down instead of going up. It's one of the most important stages, uh, you know, in 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 the growth is the pioneering stage. God tells you to go to a region. You're going to a region where you. You, you don't know anything about you don't know the people you don't know the culture but what are you going to do um, first you say yes to that call establish commitment yes lord i will go there 
uh, I don't know the language, but I will go. With the, you know, so you establish commitment. You uh, and then second point says laying the groundwork through prayer, intercession, um, reaching out, building bridges. So what you do is begin with prayer. You intercede for that land. You ask God, okay, Lord, you sent me here. Why did you send me here? What is it that you want me to do here? Show me. Speak to me. Okay, all of that is pioneering stages. And then he goes on to, and then he might lead you. Okay, go and meet this person. Go and meet that person. Uh, in uh, in case of Paul, uh, you know, in Acts chapter nine, Paul is uh, Paul is where is he was on the road to Damascus, so he's there. But God tells Ananias to go and anoint him, right? So God is speaking; he's saying something. And so what is happening is you are building network, you are building bridges. So basically, building bridges is nothing but building network or build, establishing contacts. You get to know okay, who are the other you know, ministry leaders, is there any senior pastors in the church there, or uh, any big churches that you can know of? Okay. It is the foundation laying stage. You are going down instead of going up. So your hands are getting dirty. Okay. That means you, it's groundwork is involved. You are, you know, it's, uh, does, it, it might not seem like the most fancy stages. You might you might feel like giving up at this stage because you're building bridges. Nothing seems to be happening. Lord, why am I here? One year I'm here. You haven't spoken to me. What are you doing, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. You might feel like giving up, but it's a very it's a kind of a make or break kind of a stage, the pioneering stage. Okay. Um, the second stage is administrative, organizational, and structural stage. Can someone just go through those points? Please take the mic and uh, two points. As a con con as the, a congregation uh, begins to grow, establish well-defined systems and processes to serve the people. Assign roles and functions for various ministries that the Lord releases in your midst. Establish godly standards and guidelines for your ministry team so that new members who come in uphold these values. Okay, as the congregation begins to grow, Establish well-defined systems and processes to serve the people. Um, assign roles and functions for various ministries as the Lord uh, releases in your midst. Okay, uh, next point. Uh, someone, Sri Radha. Do now what you will do, even after you have increased in numbers. Put processes in place when you have 50 people in attendance, mm. which you will maintain when you are... Uh, 500 people or 5,000 people. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So, this point is a point of faith, isn't it? So, you establish system process in place. You don't say, okay, let it grow to 100 people, then I will bring this in. Right? Let, let's work on the system right now when you have five people, 10 people, work on the system like you have 5,000, you know, uh, people already. So, uh, that's one of the, and that, that will set you up for success in the future. Okay, the next point, new ministries can be birthed. <laughs> new ministries can be birthed there by the Spirit in one of two ways. The Lord gives a vision of what needs to be done. And as you declare that vision, God strays up people stress up people who will step into it and carry it out yeah the lord any days or send people with certain gifts and callings and you recognize this and create opportunities for them to function and in new ministries or ministries ministries are birthed okay so the first point is the new ministries are birthed now what in a church you just began as a senior pastor a leader you just started the church new ministries are birthed uh, the key thing there is new ministries can be birthed by the spirit so again you're leaning on god's guidance and the lord gives a vision a lord gives a vision gives you a burden for the youth so you start youth ministry okay the lord might give you a vision or a burden for the children so you start children ministry Right? And then God stirs up uh, you know, who will step in and carry it out. The second thing is the Lord may raise. That means one among you will be raised. Or God may bring another person in who's, uh, you know, who can run that particular ministry. 
Okay, so this is the second stage, administrative, organizational, structural stage. You will learn more about all these administrative parts in the church administrative administration uh, course in third year, uh, like in more detailed fashion. And that's a very important course, um, I think, um, just to understand the importance of administration in a church, in a ministry in general. Okay, so any questions, uh, any thoughts you want to share regarding this administrative or organizational structural stage? Roles in the church is one of the important thing we had to do in the churches. Yeah, local churches. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so now that you have gone through the pioneering stage, that means you haven't given up. Uh, <laughs> okay, you have successfully come to the second stage where you are planning, you are setting up systems in place. Then comes the pastoral team stage, uh, team ministry, senior pastor stage. Okay, can someone go through those points, please? Establish a leadership team to carry out several areas of the ministry. The founding pastor moves into a senior pastor role, providing overall vision and direction for growth and expansion. Yeah. Continuously create room and opportunity for developing leaders who understand and are committed to the vision God has given. Spend time nurturing new leaders. The more trust you give, the more faithful your leaders will be. Okay. So the first point there is establish a leadership team to carry out several areas of the ministry. Um, see, as a main leader of the church or of a ministry, you can't, you cannot do everything all by yourself, right? Uh, now it can happen two ways. One is it can happen for two reasons. One is because uh, you don't trust anybody. Okay. Okay. Should I give this responsibility to Anand? Uh, no, I don't trust him. Right? Uh, you're not willing to take that risk to trust or put your faith. Um, the second thing, reason could be you want all the glory and honor, praise and power. You see in some of the movie titles, South India and all, okay, screenplay, direction, dialogue, everything, music by one person. Okay. Youth ministry pastor, same pastor. Children's ministry, same pastor. Okay. Uh, everything, one person. That That's related, no, with the second reason. Because you want all the glory. Why? Because you can be insecure. You, I shall share my glory with no other. <laughs> right? Um, but it's, you cannot. Isn't it? Uh, I mean, we can. That's a key example is Jesus Himself. He built disciples. Okay, twelve, and then later you see growing up to seventy-two. Uh, you know, and then all over the world, um, the founding pastor moves into senior pastor role, providing overall vision. So it is the responsibility of the senior pastor who provides the overall vision for the ministry, for the church, etc. Okay, and everybody comes under his leadership to serve that vision. Okay, the more trust you give, the more faithful your leaders will be. Okay, this is very, again, key. I, I, again, forgive me if I keep saying every point is important, every point is key. But being in ministry for a short amount of time, it says the more trust you give your leaders, you will learn two things again. You know that they are capable of handling that. And, or the second thing is, you know that they are not capable of handling that. So you will give that responsibility to someone else. Isn't it? Either way, you are learning something. Are you with me? So uh, you trust them. You, you you choose them. You say, okay, can you do this? If they say yes, and I, I'm kind of like that. If they say yes, let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. I'm, I'm like that kind of a person. So um, so it's very important that you trust your leaders. See what they come up with. Okay, um, It will give them the freedom to explore whatever they want. So that is the pastoral stage. Anybody in that stage? Is there anybody in anybody in any stage right now? Sri Radha is in which stage? Yes, sir. No stage. Okay. All right. 
the next com next comes the equipping building stage trainer stage someone else read that please let's go through those points focuses on equipping the saints so that the entire church is mobilized into ministry it is no longer just the leaders doing the ministry but everyone is involved emphasis on supernatural ministry and uh, moving everyone into the realms into the realm of science and wonders and the prophetic the senior pastor focuses on equipping and imparting while much of the pastoral care ministry is provided by others in the pastoral team. The church begins to penetrate the community and catches a vision for the missions. Believers are ministering to one another and to the world. Okay. So, uh, anything that you want to add, or whatever you, what do you take away from those uh, those two points? What is your understanding of that? We should equip other con our congregation, our believers, to go and minister. Okay. We should impart what God has given us to them so that they will go and impart to others. What is the meaning of equipping? Again, we use that word so much. Train. Train. Okay. Hmm. Everything is correct, guys. Yeah, train, nurture. What is nurturing? To help them grow. You take care of them. Okay, we use that in the context. Say a mother is nurturing a nurturing a child. Um, so you know it helps with feeding, taking care because a child can't help itself. It can't feed itself. It can't even sleep by itself. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> uh, you know, so in all of that is you're walking with them. This is a stage where you're walking hand in hand with them until you realize that they can take care of themselves, right? So that's equipping stage overall is discipling is what Jesus did with the disciples is he walked hand in hand with them, right? He let them see what he's doing. He let them see how he teaches, how he preaches, all of that, right? So that's the equipping stage. Um, there is a progression to the mentoring stage. Uh, we just recently finished a series on mentoring. Uh, revisit that sermon series when you can and if you can. Uh, so there is a progression to this equipping stage that we talk about. Pro and that can come in any different shape. Like equ equipping stage can also be a mentoring stage. Okay, so the progression that I believe is, uh, so if I'm your mentor, uh, I take you under my wings and say, okay, uh, all right, Prince, I'm going to do, I will do it. You watch me do it. Okay, that's one one of the progression, and then let us do it together. Let's do this, you know, whatever it is, and then you do it by yourself, and then you go train others. You see, the progression is okay. I take him under my wings. He, I do it, and I show him as an example, and then eventually we do it together. It's, okay, and then he does it. I watch him do it. I give him feedbacks if necessary, and there will come a stage where he's ready and he can go and do the, the same thing. Okay, so that is the equipping stage. Is you take a person under your wings and you get you walk with them until the, you know that they are ready, and then you can let them go. Okay, and final stage is the apostolic function stage. Okay, is, can someone go through that, please? Um, establish an apostolic mindset, outward focus rather than a focus on internal care. All other processes in place to continue to equip the saints. The senior pastor and others are more free to go out and gain new territory for the kingdom of God. Right. The church begins to actively reproduce itself in regions beyond. beyond. Believers have an apostolic mindset and are ready to sacrifice, go to new places, and extend God's kingdom to other regions. 
the local church becomes more of a mission base rather than a spiritual nursery. Right. Awesome. Thanks, Nina. Okay, so establish an apostolic mindset, outward focus rather than the focus on internal care. Um, see, now there are two kinds of people in the church, right? Uh, which, and both of them are important. One is uh, people who go, right? Who go out to do the work of the Lord. And if you're if you're either not going to do the work of the Lord, you should be under the category of you sending the people. So you either send or you go. Right, um, and so with the church that I used to be part of used to take separate offering just for missions. It was called the missions offering, and so people who give, in other words, they're helping the missionaries or they're sending the missionaries. In other words, they're supporting them. Right, we see the Antioch church was that they were not just the missions base; they supported the church in Jerusalem. In the case study, you see. Are you with me? That's what that means. They had this apostolic mindset. Okay, they would go. They would also support. Um, and then, you know, it's very easy for us in this day and age, especially, it's like, go, oh, don't go, don't go, don't go, be in this church. If you go, then the num member number will reduce. What do you want to do inside the church? Okay. Uh, say, Pastor, but, but, uh, God has told me to go. It's like, why do you want to go all that? No, 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 no. Let's, let's stay here. No. Um, but the church grew by sending people out, right? Again, I talk about the river has to flow, isn't it? Um, and and so that's a very key important for us to have the mindset of an apostle, apostolic function stage. So from the pioneering stage, you've laid the foundations uh, and you've got you have the system for your ministry to function. You've set the vision right uh, and everything, and now you're you know your ministry has grown. Let it not be stagnant. Let it flow. Encourage people to go. Okay, and that comes with equipping as well. Okay, are you all with me, guys? Yeah. Um, so, any questions, any thoughts that you'll want to share? Because I want to leave the last part of the chapter for you all to just go through that. Okay, it's uh, just uh, time for reading. It's kind of important. The conclusion part of where constantly move people forward. Uh, bridging people across two levels. I want you all to read that uh, when you can. But I want to pause here and uh, any questions or any thoughts that you want to share? Uh, something that kind of stood out to you in this chapter that we spoke about? We have four minutes. Uh, this last part, like what you just said about um, your church will grow if you send out people. Hmm. So actually, we would think like we are actually losing, but actually we are gaining when we're yeah. losing something. Yeah. 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 It's very important to have that mindset from the beginning. Like if I have that mindset in the pioneering stage or in the administrative stage as a pastor, I say, OK, right now there is zero members in the church. There will come a time of, say, 500 people. At that time, there will be some individuals who would want to go out. So if I prepare myself from that stage and have that mindset, and I will have no problem when I actually hit the mark of 500 to send people out. Yeah, you're preparing for that. You're thinking big. Yeah. Yay, Francis. Yay. <laughs> Come on, Francis. <laughs> so, actually, Pastor, I hear a story like this. It's not sorry, real thing. Like, on Pastor, at the train on like, on person, he took on person and trained. But what happened at last is he separated the church and he started another ministry. Okay. So, how to handle that situation? Like, in case we are start, we are doing, we are keeping another three days. If okay. they are doing like that, so how to your own do? thing? Yeah. See, no. I let's say you you've been part of my church. Uh, I've been equipping you and whatnot, right? And you come and tell me, uh, like, Pastor, the Lord has given me a burden to start another church and whatnot. So, see, the depth of that conversation between you and me will be based on the uh, the freedom that you and I have, or the relationship that you and I have. You trust me enough to come and tell me. That okay, this pastor is not going to get angry, but he understands, uh, you know, if I he will understand 
uh, that okay god has told me to start a new church and so in, if i am in line with god with his spirit i will i will bless you and i will send you out hmm yeah yeah so there has been a misunderstanding between the two leaders isn't it so uh, and any misunderstanding can be solved that means misunderstanding is because of miscommunication that has led to separation or parting of this church leaders okay Okay. Everything comes down to that point of communication. No. So, see, you, you want to start a new church. You can communicate by telling, okay, what do you want to communicate? It's like, do you want members from that church? Again, it talks. My point is that. Yeah, it is like that. But see, again, why am I emphasizing? I understand what, what you all are saying. Okay. But why am I stressing on communication? In at first uh, at APC, what do we announce? We ask first time visitors to stand. What do we say? What does pastor say every Sunday? Yes. What we encourage is to for you to remain faithful in that church. Okay. But if you are looking for a home home church, what is he doing? He's communicating, isn't it? So if I if I'm one of those leaders who is parting ways from a church, I will communicate. He's like, hey. You found a home church. Be faithful to it. It it comes from. It is born from that place, isn't it? Now, if my intention is to start a church and divide the church, the beginning itself is wrong, right? The initial process of that, the thought itself is uh, is not right. I would say, isn't it? Now, the people wanting to go there is a secondary because it's their choice. Now, you can choose to be with me or you can choose to go. It is their choice. The question it comes is based on the leadership, isn't it? The thought, the intention behind it. You you know, in so many cases, you don't even give that option to the people. So, how is prophecy to be tested? Uh, to keep it in perspective. Um, okay, Nina, we'll see if we can address that question next class. Um, I'm sure it will also be addressed in the. Um, a prophetic ministry course, but yeah, we'll try and address that. All right, guys, thank you uh, for joining in. God bless you. I hope you had a good time and learned something. Next week, see ya.